define for us what conscious parenting is. I think that'll give us the framework to really dive in. Sure, well, consciousness, you know, first needs to be understood as a commitment to unearthing the emotional and conditioned legacies of your mind. So we've all inherited so much baggage, you know, from culture and from unconscious parents and their ancestors. And as a result, we grow into these legacies without ever questioning how do they work for me? You know, who am I in all of this? And what is my truth in all of this? So we live off prescriptive checklists and believe that if we don't follow that checklist, then we are somehow lesser than. And when we do this with a child who's come into this world with a throbbing spirit, desirous of kind of figuring it out, and we've kind of already ruined that chance by, you know, here's the checklist. This is what I believe is success and failure and beauty and achievement. And now follow my way or you're already an outcast in my eyes. So the process of consciousness in parenting mandates that the parent not hand over that prescription. And in order for the parent to not hand that over, means that they have had to come to let go of that prescription themselves. They've had to somehow deconstruct their own emotional legacies and find their own truth so that they can then unleash it in their child. It really is neat the way that your book focuses so much on the parent and not on the kid. And as somebody who doesn't have kids, I haven't read a lot of parenting books, um, but certainly I've encountered enough of this to realize normally it's tactics, tools, techniques to really help your kid manifest their potential or get into the best school or, you know, whatever that book is aimed at. Um, when did you start thinking about the fact that this is really uh, a problem aimed at the parents, that it's a cycle, that it's literally just generation after generation, it's being passed down? What was that moment for you? Yeah, it was uh, quite epiphanic because I did not want to see this. You know, this is not a convenient truth <laughs> to tell the parent that they have to fix themselves. I mean, the last thing a parent, because we're very defensive and we always believe we're right. And this is our one chance to show the world that this we got it right. You know, we're good enough, our children. And now being told that it is not the child and it's all you. And there's something you need to look at is threatening for the parent. It's threatening for anyone. No one wants to look in the mirror, correct? So now to be asked to look in the mirror in the most intimate, profound experience and relationship of your life is deeply ominous for a parent. It takes a lot of courage. But when I came upon it is as a therapist working with family after family and observing that here were parents who had completed the checklist. They had financial success. They had emotional longevity in long-term relationships. They had arrived. And yet there was a deep dysfunction or deep disconnection between themselves and their children. So that led me to be curious, you know, well, what is it? You know, if it isn't what we think it is, success, money, marriage, stability, uh, maturity, then what is it? And I began to see that it's this thing that I call consciousness, which is really the parent's inability to realize that there's, there's this thing called conditioning that obscures the ability to see the child for who it is. So because we've been conditioned, you, we don't even know we're so conditioned. With like cultural norms and stuff? Well, well everything. Sure. We're conditioned by our own childhood, by the unconsciousness of our parents. We're conditioned by culture in terms of norms, what is right, what's when acceptable. You say that the unconsciousness of our parents, you mean that they've just handed over what they were handed? All this up, they've not been aware, they've not been attuned, they've not been aligned, they've just been doing what they were told was the right way to live. But what this does, this, this immediate placement of a way to be, obscures the ability for the child to develop their way, right? They never get to figure out who it is they are. They never hear the soul calling from within. They never hear the beat of their own essence. They just come to be herded into cattle, <laughs> right? And this is where there's a disconnect because the child is like, hey, see me. And all they see reflected back is the parent's ideation of what they should be. And then the abyss between who the child believes they are and who they feel they should be grows wider. So you have, well, you know, in adulthood you see all grown up children walking around lost and aimless, finding who it is they are. Why is it that you, you're doing this show? To help children, grown children, recover what they once had. And that's a tragedy. 
right? Because they had it. We all had it once. So what happens? What happens is that the parent, because of their unconsciousness and their being, uh, you know, completely overwhelmed by conditioning, pluck the child's essence out and, and shove all this unconscious garbage in, which has never been deconstructed. And they tell the child how to be. Then the child has to go through all their life and then one day have an epiphany or be vomiting on a bathroom floor, you know, overdose, that they begin to say, now I need to find who it is I am. Right. And that's this endless cycle. We're all on it. We're all on reading my books and watching your shows to recover from the parenting we received. That's it's really, really interesting. So I'll walk you through my transition reading your book. I think it will be very familiar to you. Okay. So um, the team brought you to my attention and said, I think you're really going to be blown away. I see it. I'm like, oh, man, she's amazing. Like, so you're so good at your talks. Oh, my God. Like, you are amazing. And so immediate, yeah, absolutely, bring her on. Then I go into like the real research where I dive in and reading the books, like really, really going in. And I start hearing some of your like real philosophies about parenting. And I was like, oh, I can't like, I, I was shocked. I'll be honest. I was like, wow, man. Like, so, and the wonderful part is we're gonna play uh, a game sort of here in a minute because I'm so fascinated by how consistent you are with your answers. Like, but when you when you really start that deconstruction process of, okay, you don't get to pour yourself into your child. Your child is, is not owned by you. What does that really look like as a parent? And, and I was going through that like in real time, like, wait, if I had a kid, like I wouldn't be able to tell them what to do. I wouldn't be able to, you know, take ownership and guide them and, and so that was really, really fascinating. It's tricky. How do you help parents through that when, well, first, what is it that makes them cling so hard? And then how do you help them through it? It's really tricky, you know, from green beans to uh, having sex to young. <laughs> it's knowing where that line is, you know? But it's the same thing, though. It's really, it's what's your stance as a parent? You know, can I shove those green beans down? Can I stop my kid from having sex? Like, what is my jurisdiction? Right. What is that sovereign line? It's really tough. And the beauty of life, though, is that there is no line in stone. Most of it is in sand. And it's uncomfortable. Life is this eternal dance between the knowing and the not knowing, between the uh, possessing and complete non-possession, between the doing and the non-doing. Isn't life constantly the art of this? No more do you see it you know, played out than in the parent-child relationship. The child is asking you, guide me, control me. I don't know how to do it. And you're like, yeah, I'll do it, I'll help you, I'll show you. But then you're like, then you suddenly reach a line where the child can't do it and can't do it your way. So now you have to back off. Then you go in and then you have to back off. You have to be there everything. You have to provide, care for, and you know, give everything, but you can't really own them. You know, it's this, it, this constant dance between stepping into the, the doing and the ego of it and your role as a parent to stepping completely out of it to understanding that your children are here ultimately to be their own sovereign beings so you can try and pretend and identify with the role but ultimately they're their own person so you and then you back off you right you go close and then you have to back off and if you don't and you ramrod into your child because you, you don't see the line no parents use the line you miss the line the line is like way back you just stopped way back two years ago right but you kept going then the kid will will create something to push you away. They'll either slam the door, they'll create the defense, they'll move to China, they'll do something to go, okay, back off now. I need to find who it is I am. Or they will wallow in an addiction because they don't know how, where to go. Because you don't know your boundary, right, as a parent. 